Okay, solving multi-step conversion problems. So that, those examples we did, just one step. Sometimes, in fact, often you need more than one step. Same procedure, just more steps. So let's do a quick example here of converting centimeters to feet. So we're starting with centimeters. So we start here over 194 centimeters, and it says convert that to feet. So then we need to make the path, we have to figure out, well, what relationships do we need? Do you know how many centimeters are in a foot? I don't. Now, I completely understand you can ask your telephone, your cell phone, right? You can ask your cell phone, say, hey, Siri, how many centimeters in a foot? And she'll tell you. But you can't do that on an exam. So on an exam, you need to work with what's either stored in your head or given on the paper. So when we're doing these problems as practice, we should avoid asking Siri. So centimeters to feet, I don't know. What relationships do I know? I know how many inches are in a foot. So if I had inches in the middle, I could do inches to feet. That should be common knowledge, 12 inches in a foot. Centimeters to inches, that's a relationship I told you yesterday you need to memorize. So we should be able to do centimeters to inches and then inches to feet. Okay? So this, this one has two arrows, so it's going to have two fractions. So I start with 194 centimeters, and then I'm going to draw the two fractions. This path I've written down here tells me what to do. Centimeters, inches, feet. Those are the units I'm going to write here. I already have centimeters. This next one will be inches and then feet. Dimensional analysis, you put the units in, and then you mess around with the numbers. So you see how that works? Centimeters, inches, feet. Centimeters, inches, feet. What goes in the denominator is the previous unit, because we're trying to get rid of centimeters. So we want to divide by centimeters here. <coughs> so the centimeters cancel out. In the next fraction, I want to get rid of inches, so I'm going to divide by inches and the inches cancel out. You see it? Now that all the units are in place, I can put the numbers in. So I look at these, and you know the book shows writing the conversion factors here, and that's entirely valid, that's fine, but you can also do it without doing that. You come over here and you say, well, what's the relationship between feet and inches? 12 inches is one foot, right? So 12 inches is the same length as one foot. The numerator is equal to the denominator. You measure a piece of wood that's one foot long, you measure it again, it's 12 inches, right? They're the same. Over here, the relationship between inches and centimeters, this is one you need to memorize, one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So you don't have to think about, well, should I multiply by 2.54 or divide? You put the units in, you match the numbers up with their units, and then you've got the equation. When you're doing this on your calculator, there are different ways to do it, but I highly recommend this method. Start on the left, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. If you have more steps, just continue on like that, and then you won't miss anything. Obviously, if there's ones, you can skip those, but if that bothers you, go ahead. You can multiply and divide by one all day long if it makes you happy. So I'm going to do 194. I'm going to skip the times one, divided by 2.54, times one, divided by 12, equals. So we need to write down what the calculator says, but oftentimes it's a bit ridiculous. So I could look at this and predict the number of sig figs. Um, this number has three significant figures. This is exact, and that's exact. So my answer should have three significant figures. What I want to write down here is a couple of extra digits. 
So I should have three. Let's write down two extras, and then we'll round it. So I don't have to write down everything the calculator says. It says 6.36. There's my three sig figs, and then I'm going to write down two extra digits. And the unit there would be feet. And then I'm going to go and round that, and it's going to be 6.36 feet. If you want to write down all the rest of them as 29396, you can do that. It's a bit tedious after a while. Any questions? Yeah? Why did you do the extra two when you only had to go with That's a good question. Why write down the extra two? Sometimes you come back later and you realize, I need to use this value in a calculation. If you're going to do further calculations, you don't want to use a rounded value because those small bits of rounding can add up to significant errors sometimes. So if I've written two extra digits, I can use this um, in a further calculation without doing it over again. Also, sometimes you misjudge how many sig figs you should have, and you realize later, oh, I needed one more. And so if you just wrote down the three that you thought you needed, then you have to do the whole calculation over again. Um, also, sometimes people round incorrectly, and so it's a good idea to write down an intermediate value here with extra sig figs. I would say two is the minimum, and then round the number. So it's just sort of a precaution. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's a good idea. The last step should be, does this answer make sense? Um, one of the ways that you can identify whether things make sense or not is what I call the bigger-smaller rule. So here we have two units, a centimeter and a foot. And hopefully we recognize that a centimeter is smaller than a foot. So the small unit should have the big number. The big unit should have the small number. Otherwise, we got something upside down. So here we have the small unit with the large number, 194. And the larger unit, foot, has the smaller number. And so that suggests that we did it correctly. Let's do another one. Recipe calls for 1.2 cups of oil. How many liters of oil is this? Dimensional analysis is something that you will use in your everyday life. Um, it's great for converting units in the kitchen or giving medicine to your future children. Um, it's useful in lots of, lots of places. Okay, so this, res this uh, recipe, this problem has a few more words, but there's really only one number in it. And so that's probably what we're starting with, 1.2 cups. Recipe calls for this many cups of oil. How many liters? So liter is the question. Um, we want the, to find that answer in liters. So we identified where we started, where we're going. Now we have to figure out how to get there. This is how conversion factors will be given to you on an exam when they're not things I expect you to know. So this is like a little hint here. One liter is equal to that many quarts. Sometimes when you're trying to figure out this solution map, sometimes you start at the beginning and just chug right through to the end. Other times you have to start at the end and work backwards, or sometimes you work from both ends and hope you meet in the middle. So here we've got a relationship between liters and quarts. Um, I'm trying to get to liters. So I could have quart as the step right before liters because then the conversion factor for this is given to me right there. Now we need to figure out quarts and cups. And this, this illustrates the beauty of the English system. So this is not something I would expect you to know for an exam. What's the unit between cup and quart? You know, it's a pint. So a pint is in the middle here. There are two cups in a pint, and there are two pints in a quart, and then there's four quarts in a gallon. Quart, like quarter. It's a quarter gallon. So that's something you may have needed to look up. But now we have three steps. 1.2 cups, three arrows, three fractions. The path says, 
cups to pints to quarts to liters. So that's what we're going to write here, cups to pints to quarts to liters. Once you get the path down, it's just a matter of following a pattern. So the first fraction here, I need to divide by cups because I want all these extra units to go away. So cups cancels out. The next one here, I'm going to divide by pint. So pints cancel out. And the last one, I'm going to divide by quarts. So the quarts cancel out. It's the units. It's all about the units. Now we go put the numbers in. You can do them in any order you want. I usually pick the easy one. This one seems easy to me because the relationship was given right here. One liter equals 1.057 quarts. So I'm going to put one in front of liter. One liter is 1.057 quarts. Relationship between quarts and pints. There's two pints in a quart. So one quart is two pints. And there are two cups in one pint. One pint equals two cups. Now I just go across with my calculator. I start with 1.2 times 1 divided by 2 times 1 divided by 2 times 1 divided by 1.057 equals. How many significant figures is this answer going to have? It's going to have two. So as I write down this result here, I need two significant figures. I'm going to write the next two digits um, just as extras and the unit. And then I'm going to round it. Did not mean to do that. There we go. So rounding, I look at the first digit that I'm getting rid of. It's less than 5. So this is 0.28 liters. These unit conversions are exact because they're within the English system. This conversion is between metric and English. It is not exact. But um, this one has four significant figures. Exactly one liter is equal to 1.057 quarts four sig figs and two sig figs. Two fig, sig figs is smaller. Any questions? Here's one that's a little more challenging. A running track measures 1,056 feet per lap. To run 15 kilometers, how many laps should you run? And we're given this relationship that a, a mile is 5,280 feet. So here we have a problem given, and it's got two numbers in it. So here's where sorting can be helpful. Write down the numbers with their units, just as a beginning. So 1,056 feet per lap. That's like miles per hour. That's a fraction, feet per lap. You could also write it. 1,056 feet is equal to one lap. And the other number we're given is 15.0 with the unit kilometers. When you're solving word problems, read through the whole thing. It's probably not going to be obvious to you what you should do. That's OK. It's a puzzle. You have to work at it. So then you start by writing some stuff down and thinking about it and strategizing. So here we've got the numbers written down. And then we're going to ask ourselves, well, what, what are we trying to find? So look for the question word, how, how many laps. So the unit I want at the end is going to be laps. Now I'm supposed to run 15 kilometers. How many times around this track do I need to go? So now we have to figure out which of these should we start with. Well, this is kilometers. That's just a simple single unit. This is feet per lap, or this relationship between two units. That could be used as a conversion factor. 
Some conversion factors are universal, like a mile is 5,280 feet. Others are situational. So for this particular running track, one lap is 1,056 feet. That's not necessarily true of all tracks. This looks like it could be a conversion factor. So that's probably not where we're going to start. This one cannot be used as a conversion factor, so that's our starting point. We're going to start with kilometers, and we're going to try to get to laps. We're going to have several units in between. So what do we know? Well, we know that a mile is 5,280 feet, um, <coughs> but we don't have either of those units in here. Here we have a relationship between feet and laps. So if we got to feet before laps, we could do that. <coughs> now, how do we get from kilometers to feet? Well, we could try using this. A mile is 5,280 feet. So if we had miles, we could use that to get to feet. Now we're missing kilometers to miles. We could look it up. Let's go back. Let's look in this table. One kilometer is 0.6214 miles. So we could use that. So kilometer, 0.6214. Let's see if I can remember that. 0 0.6214. 0 0.6214. So 0 0.6214 miles equals one kilometer. So that's what we need to get from kilometers to miles. So for each of the arrows, you need to know the relationship between those two units. For this problem, there are several other ways that you could, several other paths you could take. Just like when I drive from my home in Reedley to Fresno City College, there are several different ways that I could go. Which one's better? Well, it depends on your opinion, right? So doing a problem, you're not always necessarily going to have the same solution map as your friend. It's okay. There's multiple ways to do it. Okay. So here we've got three arrows. We're going to have three fractions. One, two, three. This always reminds me of Dora, the explorer. You know, they chant, well, to get to the snowy mountains, first we have to go over the bridge and through the scary woods, and then we get to the, the snowy mountains. And then they chant that, right? Kilometers, miles, feet, laps. Kilometers, miles, feet, laps. Kilometers, miles, feet, laps. The previous unit becomes the denominator. Kilometers goes down there so we can cancel those out. And then I'm going to write miles down here so we can cancel those out. And feet down here. Cancel it out. Now we put in numbers. We were told that one lap was 1,056 feet. So that's what's going to go over here. One lap is 1,056 feet. We were given the relationship between miles and feet. One mile is 5,280 feet. And we looked this one up, the relationship between miles and kilometers. One kilometer was 0.6, copy it down right, 6214 miles. So 15 times 0.6214 divided by 1 times 5,280 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 1,056. That's what my calculator gives me. Anybody else get that same number? Okay, thanks. 
complicated or long problems like this, it's often a good idea to, to do the numbers on your calculator twice. If you come up with the same answer both times, awesome. If not, go for best two out of three. Sometimes you have to go for you know, best three out of five or something. Now, significant figures. So our starting number at three, because that zero is significant, three sig figs. Miles to kilometers is not exact, but that number had four, four sig figs. This one's exact because it's within the English system. This one, do you think that's exact? Do you think a lap is exactly 1,056 feet? No, probably not, because that's going to have to have been measured. But it would still have four significant figures, right? So the smallest number of significant figures is our starting number. And that is typically what's going to happen is the sig figs in your answer will be limited by the number you're starting with. So if, if you're having a horrible time with sig figs, that's a shortcut that will get you the correct number a lot of the time. If you start with three, end up with three. So if we're going to end up with three sig figs, we're going to have 46.6 laps. So the person should run a little over 46 and a half laps to get the 15 kilometers. Any questions? <laughs>